WeRiseMag.com Uh, no, it was important for me to have this move back to at least a decent time period because uh, this is a panel that means a lot to me. I, I've had a lot of really great experiences doing this at other conventions, uh, and I think it's a pretty important subject that we kind of gloss over a lot lately. So, um, uh, sound effects. This is panel has <laughs> sound effects too. Uh, a uh, warning, just if any of you that haven't been in any of my other panels, I'm extremely ADD and I apologize for it now, this is who I am. Uh, so, I uh, just want to give you a little brief introduction of the Kids Better Project, in case you don't know that. Uh, and if everybody in here has heard of it, then we can move on, but uh, uh, I'll tell you who I am and why I'm doing this here, and then get to why I think it's cool we do it, and why don't I stop telling you what my outline is and just do my panel. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, how many of you in here have heard of the Hit Kids Better Project? Anybody, anybody unfamiliar with it? Awesome, there's actually a few, yeah. Okay, so here's the history of it, and uh, if, uh, before I start this, I know it's Sunday morning, so um, I ask that everybody attend this panel with an open mind, and if you have a problem with something, uh, find a nice way to tell me you have a problem with it, because uh, we're about to start saying uh, the words like, gay, but it'll be okay, nobody will die. <laughs> So, um, just a warning, because uh, we live in a time period where people don't want you to say that word. Uh, but, um, here's the history of this project. Uh, Dan Savage, who is a columnist, uh, he's a gay love and sex advice columnist. I like to talk of, I like to think of him as like a gay Dr. Ruth, only with like a little bit of stand-up comedy thrown in. Uh, has this podcast and this column called Savage Love, and um, created this video project based on a string of suicides. Uh, there were, in September of 2010, there were a string of almost nine suicides of teenage youth that were either LGBT uh, or perceived to be LGBT. Uh, and they, it was shocking. Every time you turn on the news, somebody had hung themselves, as was the case in Houston, where my family lives. Uh, it's so weird to talk about this while there's cheering next door. Uh, uh, you know, uh, whether they had shot themselves, hung themselves, uh, what not. Uh, it seemed like every time the news was on, you were hearing about some kid, some really young kid. The kid in Houston was like 13 years old. Um, so, Dan Savage decided to create a video that basically just said, look, uh, as an adult, as a gay male who lived through every awful thing you're living through right now, this horrible time period that you're living in right this second, that you feel like there's no answer to and will never be over, will be over in the flash of an eye. And look, I'm living proof that your life will get better, you'll make friends, you will find someone that loves you, and this will all be over quickly. And so, the neat thing that happened was a bunch of famous people jumped on board. How many of you know, can think of any of the bigger It Gets Better videos? Yeah. Rob Thomas, I didn't even see that one. Wow, okay. Who else? Yeah. J. Michael Tatum and Terry Doty did it in our own anime industry, yeah. Uh, yeah. Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga was a big one, yeah. Uh, Pixar has one of my favorites. The Pixar It Gets Better video is awesome. Uh, Ellen DeGeneres, of course, George Takei. Why wouldn't George Takei make a video? Uh, more importantly, what's cool is it started off with a bunch of famous people. And I think it's, it's important to note that in less than a month, in October of 2010, which this started in September, our president, Barack Obama, made his own It Gets Better video. Uh, and the thing I like about his is it wasn't directed just towards gay youth, it was just directed towards everybody. Like, hey, uh, no one is alone, we're all in this together, and we'll, you know, We'll all support each other and we'll all make it out on the other side. And I thought it was a really cool idea. And what I think is more important was what happened next. And that is normal, everyday people like you and I started making their own videos. Uh, 
it's one thing for a celebrity to stand up and say something. We always feel like celebrities are, are not, they don't live the same life we do. It's another thing to see somebody that looks just like you and sounds just like you saying, you know what, I was here just six months ago and now I'm in a different place. And so uh, to get, not to spend too much time on the history of this, just, it's really just the background. Uh, the page outgrew its original YouTube roots and it had to have its own web server built. Um, and in just a few months, in March of 2011, so you think from September to March is just a few months, the first ever uh, White House conference on bullying took place about bullying in education, uh, which meant like that for once, very quickly, a social movement caught the eye of the White House, which, you know, the White House, it takes years for them to find out anything we're doing. Uh, so, that was pretty important, and all the way leading up into 2011, there was a book published with all these fascinating stories by people just like you and I, and, and they're, they're coming to grips with who they are and what they do, and their success stories on the other side of the tunnel. So, that's the history of the project, and I know we already lost a few. Uh, it always happens. I think this is like war. Everybody that starts here is not going to end here, and that's fine. Uh, but. Uh, Flash forward to who I am and why I think it's important we do this at Anatomy Convention. Um, my name is Craig Ayers, and uh, even though I am a voice actor, and I have a DJ, and I write scripts, and I have a prairie dog, and do all these weird things, uh, I'm a victim or product of a bullied childhood. Um, it's probably shocking for most of you to find out that the last success, aside from my rude Bioshock phone interrupting everyone, okay. Uh, of course, that's my friend that's here and wants to know where the panel is. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I'll do that in a minute. I'll do, I'll wait and like quietly do it when somebody else is talking in a minute. Uh, uh, it's like, where is it? He's got a program guide. Um, so, uh, like I said, it's surprising to most people to know that the last successful grade I completed in public school was seventh, seventh grade. I'm just going to keep talking. Uh, I was socially promoted to high school because people thought, oh, well, people will be nicer in high school, and I proceeded to be beaten up every day in high school as well. Uh, the good thing is I didn't learn how to ball up my fist and punch somebody until I was way out of high school, uh, because what I find and what I see now is that bullying kids that fight back are always the ones that get in trouble. Um, but they took a kid that loved learning, and specifically loved reading, and made me not want to wake up every day. Uh, and the funny thing is, this was even before I knew I was gay. This was just people saying I was gay. I was like, no, I'm 12. I'm not gay, I'm just 12. Uh, <laughs> then by the time I was 14, I was like, yes, I am, and you can't beat it out of me, and they tried, and I, this is why I got beat up twice. I'm like, nope, still gay. Like, <laughs> so, uh, so um, but they took a kid that really loved learning and, and exploring ideas and whatnot and made me hate everything about being in school. They made me hate learning, they made me hate reading. Uh, and luckily my parents let me stew on that for a year and just be miserable and angry and uh, talk to people and get that out of my system. And then I got back on with things and I went to college and got a degree and went on to do a million other things. Uh, but. There was a time in my life where I felt just like the kids who killed everyone in Columbine. I hated everyone at my school. If every one of them dropped dead, I would probably laugh. And that's a pretty sick place to put a really happy kid. I was a pretty happy kid up until that point. Uh, and so I know better than anybody what it feels like to be in the most dark, horrible, awful place. And by the way, I'm not a natural born killer. Uh, but when you put a child in a situation where they're threatened every single day, and every single day is the new possibility of being beaten up in a way they've never been beaten up before, uh, it does something to your spirit, it does something to how you feel about yourself. Well, jokes on every guy that flicks me in the back of the head or hit me with the lunchbox, is, uh, let's see, I get on a plane every weekend, I get free alcohol handed to me on a regular basis, I throw giant rave parties and dance ridiculously till four or five in the morning every weekend. And I surround myself with the coolest people and costumes and whatnot. And I don't have to say, can I supersize your order? And I'm not making fun of anybody that does that, but 
I'm saying I have a really good time every day. I ended up lucking out. And at the end of this, what looked like an awful ride, I, I, I managed to get the golden ticket and, and find something fun. Uh, so like, I definitely believe in what everyone is saying in these videos. I do believe that uh, your life does change in the flash of an eye. And what seems like an impossible problem to overcome as a child really seems like nothing when you get to be my age. Now, without spending too much time, too much graphic detail on me, because that's pretty much, in a nutshell, what it is, um, I got a lot of flack when I started doing this at conventions, because people were like, well, this has nothing to do with anime. They always make me try to say it their way. And I'm, I'm so old school, we used to call it Japanimation, so I'll say it however I like. Uh, but uh, they said, this has nothing to do with anime, this has nothing to do with, this is too overtly sexual, it's too political. Well, here's why I think it's important that we talk about this at anime conventions. Uh, in the last four years, I've seen a ridiculous rise, and shake your head if you've seen this too, of bullying within our own family, correct? Like, everywhere. Whether it's people picking on Homestuck cosplayers, uh, whether it's Homestuck people picking on non-Homestuck people, uh, in this environment, suddenly we've seen a rise of the things that we came here to get rid of or get away from. Um, it's strange to me because, um, wow, I lost my place. There we go. I lost my place in my, in my, my notes. I was like, ah. Um, I would say 90% of fandom comes from some sort of bullying background. And if not bullying, uh, being a nerd has never been the cool thing. That's only new. That's brand new that being a nerd is cool. Thank you, Big Bang Theory. But, uh, you know. It, being a nerd or being good at science or something has not been how you get dates and how you get voted the most popular kid in school. Uh, so even if you weren't a victim of bullying, you probably, you know, most of the fandom knows what it's like to be excluded, uh, to be the last person picked for sports, which was fine by me because I didn't want to play them anyway. Uh, that, that just meant I could just stand in the outfield and go. Uh, so um, the other thing is, this community, and like I said before, this community has served as a safe haven for so many people for so long. There are now kids that don't feel safe at conventions, and I think that's disgusting. That makes me feel sick on the stomach. Uh, how can anybody dressed in any costume look at somebody in any other costume and make fun of them? Uh, that's just ridiculous. Um, and, and we see it all the time. Where do you see occurrences of bullying within fandom? And this is interactive, y'all can help me out, because I'll, otherwise I'll fall asleep. Yeah? Uh, most, most forms of uh, cosplay, uh, if someone's costume isn't good enough or something, someone's perceived standards or something like that. Oh, definitely. Uh, like cosplay bullying, I've got a really sad story to tell you about later, but uh, there's this popular thing to do on the internet where they take a picture of a plus-size cosplayer, or a cosplayer that doesn't meet someone's you know, chiseled jawbone, Herculean standards, and they use meme text above and below it to write something horrifyingly mean. Uh, and funny thing is, I've seen some of the guys that make these photos, and uh, people who live in glass houses, you know, <laughs> just saying. Uh, but that's horrible, and it makes people not feel comfortable to put on a costume and, and be somebody else. I thought that's the whole point of cosplay, is, Dress up like somebody you're not. If I feel like being Lumpy Space Princess, I should <laughs> be able to be LSP and have fun. Uh, yeah. I've seen those videos on YouTube where there's these people who go, like, why Americans should cosplay, and they'll show all these people uh, like, Jap really good Japanese cosplays, and then Americans. There was a whole, there was a whole Facebook group. It was shut down, actually. It was a Facebook group, uh, uh, Asian Cosplayers Against Western Cosplay, or something like that. And they were saying that. Americans look stupid in cosplay. I'm like, I think we all look stupid in costume. That's the point. That's the point. You make normal people scratch their head. That's the whole point, you know. Like, but yeah, I've I've seen that a lot. Uh, I've seen it's it's just like bands, you know. Somebody got on to me because they said you don't listen to enough Japanese music. I'm like, well, that's not the criteria. It has just got to be good. There's good Japanese music, there's good American music. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's great. I think it's great. And I don't even think it should be that, because I've seen adult, like, professional-level cosplayers bagging on young kids who've got, you know, 
fairly Duck Dynasty style costume, but uh, the whole point is to have fun. The, the whole point is, it doesn't have to be the prettiest costume. Yeah, you should take pride in your work and try to get it as good as you can, but if all I could do was sew two bed sheets together, well then I'm a ghost, and that's fine. <laughs> like, I should be able to do that, yeah. Yeah. Such as like males doing this year. Crossplay, yeah, crossplay. And then females doing like Luffy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is tough because you have to do the best version of Luffy. Uh, <laughs> if you're a female. Uh, yeah, the uh, cross players get a lot of flack too. In fact, there's a, a guy uh, that goes to a show I go to in the Midwest, and he is not gay. He's not weird, he just thinks Gothic Lolita is cool, and he just decided he was going to start wearing Gothic Lolita dresses. And he gets no end of grief for it. But you know what? This is the one place where it's okay. And I'm not going to assume he's a child molester or a weirdo. I'm just going to say he had an extra hundred dollars and that looked like a pretty nice dress, you know? <laughs> but this is, and like, especially in this environment, I think we're one of the safest places for kids. Like, you know, somebody said, oh, well, I don't, you know, I don't like all that. We come to the convention with our own security team. You know, we have our own security people. And I've watched uh, what I call a diaper sniper or like a, a creepo. I've watched one of those guys get kicked out like in less than five minutes. The first time they start acting weird. So I think we're the safest place around right now. Yeah, other places you see it. It was, um, it was sort of the behavior that sparks the uh, cosplay is not consent. Oh yeah. Harassment that, yeah. You know, people who decide to wear maybe their costume requires less cloth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. And while I think there's an appropriate amount of costume that we should adhere to when we've got kids around, yeah, definitely. Just because someone's in a costume that may resemble a bathing suit in parts does not mean you can come up and you know tan their hide. Definitely, that's a form of bullying. It, Taking or having your way with somebody or smacking somebody or hugging somebody or pinching somebody without their permission is a form of assault, technically. So yeah, definitely. I'm glad you brought up the cosplay is not consent thing because that's become a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, I mentioned that in my panel uh, the other day. Yeah. Now, I've not, I've only seen one instance of an assault, but what they normally do is they dump like syrup on their costumes or mess up their makeup or throw water balloons at them, but I've only known of one assault to take place. But yeah, that's a really big deal on the West Coast right now. They're having a real problem with the Homestuck Hunter thing. Uh, and I'm gonna talk about Homestuck specifically in a little bit because there's things that go on on both sides of that fandom that kind of encourage that and make it worse and whatnot. Yeah. Just like people coming up to you and kind of give you slack for not knowing of this anime, kind of telling you, like, you're not a real otaku, why are you here? And I kind of experienced that, and that just makes me self-conscious, like, then what am I doing? Elitism. It's why I stopped watching anime for a few years. Uh, I was in an anime store in Houston, which narrows it down, because there was only one back then. <laughs> uh, so, maybe Planet Anime. Uh, and this little kid was coming in, it was Christmas time, and, you know, I'm a nerd, and that's where I do my Christmas shopping. <laughs> And so I'm picking out like, you know, a pencil board for Misty and a Gundam model for my friend Dan. Just, you know, that's what I was doing. And I was listening to this little kid talk to the guy behind the counter who is a grown man, like in his 20s. And this little kid was doing that thing where, you know, like people were like, I hear there's going to be more Dragon Ball. He was doing that kind of thing. And the guy just came unglued. He goes, uh, kid, I would know. I'm from Japan. And I saw that when it was on television. And I was just like... And I sit there and I go, you win. You want a cookie? Like, I was just like, you just made a 10 year old feel horrible. Uh, I hate elitism worse than anything. I, I, I think it's so weird to have like two little kids, like I do conventions all over the country, I heard these two little kids talking about the OVAs of something. And somebody's like, uh, that stands for original video animation. It's OVA. And I was like, Oh, hey, there was a polite way to do that, too. Like, oh, hey, did you know it's actually called OVA? Like, I would so, rather someone come up to me and be like, oh, this is what the show's about, than saying that you haven't seen it. Why haven't oh, you, you seen it? You need to go home and see it right now. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you must not be a fan if you haven't seen this. Well, 
I don't, you know, that's like saying I have to eat all foods just because I like eating. <laughs> I hate certain things, you know, like, no, you can like anime the way you want to like it. If you just want to watch it, and there are people that would do this, if you just want to watch Dragon Ball Z every day for the rest of your life, you're a Dragon Ball Z fan, who cares? If that's what you like, that's what you like, yeah. all the time and I'm like uh, you know this is a group of kids that are creative they make costumes uh, they're very expressive they take care of each other and they encourage each other to learn about a foreign culture and learn new languages and read mmm sounds like a dumb bunch of people to me you know like yeah And that's why I do this panel. That's why, absolutely why I do this panel, because this should be that place. This is absolutely what that place is supposed to be, where we can all like whatever we like. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I've been at all of them, so. <laughs> Oh, that's this year, that's this last year, the BBYO, the B'nai B'rith Youth Organization, yeah. Now, I actually know the real story, here's what really happened. And to give you, I'll give you the good news afterwards. Uh, a girl was wearing a panty stocking costume and a bunch of boys started tearing her costume off of her. Yeah, and it was, uh, it was really horrible because when the when Cat Tecon takes all those situations very seriously and they reported it to the hotel, and when the hotel took it up with the youth organization, the youth organization said that was absolutely not true. And for a while, it was really tough because you had two conventions that were absolutely fighting each other, and the convention organizers were trying to get everyone to get along. I mean. Contrary to what anybody would believe, the BBYO is not a racist organization and not, a, you know, a horrible thing. But because of the poor, uh, the poor behavior of the attendees, they're never welcome back in the Gaylord Hotels now. So that's how bad it was. Now we were invited back. In fact, the the nerds will be back next year. <laughs> the you know super respectable youth organization will not. But. Uh, I, I don't blame the PBYO for that. I blame a bunch of bad kids. And all you had to do was go look at their Facebook page and see them saying horrible, well, these people were disgusting and they smelled bad and I, I didn't feel safe around them. And you can see they had a very horrible attitude about all of us. But that was, that was yeah, that was a really bad situation. And the good, the good news to that story is they behave, behave so poorly they're not welcome back there anymore. So, uh... It was, I blame what happened there, not on the youth organization, but a horny bunch of kids, you know, a horny bunch of kids that, and these were supposedly what I understand were well-off, wealthy kids who kind of feel like they get to do whatever they want anyway. Uh, but that could have been a criminal investigation really quickly, and the cosplayer was actually way cooler about it than anybody else. Uh, of course, when it hits the internet, that turns into, she was raped in the hall, you know, which is not what really happened. A bunch of guys got real gross and grabby, and that's, that's very much why we talk about this whole cosplay is not consent thing, because just because I have a tiny outfit on does not mean you're allowed to act like we're at, you know, a burlesque show or whatnot. So yeah, but I was there. That was a big deal when it happened. And again, like I said, this is such a safe place. We already had security people dealing, you know, Katsukon has a massive security team and they were dealing with it right when it happened. So, you know, I'd rather it be there than at a nightclub where they're like, ah, eh, not my problem, you know. At least she was a little safer. Yeah. Um, fandom? Oh.
idea that the men who come here and who are dressed up as these um, young female ponies, they're perceived as, um, um, I don't know how to describe it, not very nice. They're, uh, Which is silly. What's the difference between me being dressed as Pinkie Pie or me being Jigglypuff? <laughs> Jigglypuff is a very cute, cuddly girl character. Or is she? Yeah, I'm gonna say Jigglypuff. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say Jigglypuff is female. Yeah, she's got that little curl. So. There's a dark side. Exactly. That's, I'm glad you said that because you know I, I try not to ever put my brain there. I'm not. I try not to go. Well, why are these grown men? You know what? I am in my 40s and I have pink hair. I'm sure there are plenty of people that want to know that. But you know what? I don't even think too hard about it. I just do have pink hair. And, uh, and so if somebody, if that's what gets somebody through their day or through the weekend, and they love dressing up like ponies and talking about ponies, fine. I don't care. Oh yeah, well that's, I mean that's what we're talking about in general. Let me specifically, I want to talk about some specific groups that I know get targeted, because uh, there's one group nobody's mentioned, and they were the targets of violent attacks at anime conventions several years ago, and that's furries. Uh, there are fur people within furry fandom that were assaulted. Uh, there was a girl that was assaulted at Otakon a few years ago, and the people that did it, like most idiots who commit crimes, thought it would be cute to videotape it and put it on the internet where their crimes could be seen by everyone. Uh, so, way to go, Dumbo. Uh, so, but that was horrifying, and they didn't realize there was a woman in the costume, because guess what? A mascot costume, you can't tell whether it's male or female, because sometimes it's made to look like a female, I love that I did this, female animal, but, because animals don't have that. Um, and these. Uh, but, uh, uh, like, I can be in that costume. I know at Disney there's several times there's a boy inside the Minnie Mouse costume. You know, it's just how that works. Um, Yaoi fans get picked on a lot. In fact, I have a whole panel that I do called What Does Yaoi Have to Do With That? where I explain what Yaoi is to people that hate Yaoi. And we get Yaoi fans to talk to non-Yaoi fans. And we get people that hate Yaoi to talk to Yaoi fans about why they hate their fandom. And, uh, but yeah, that became a big issue. In fact, there were guys that were taking the Yaoi paddles and hitting, you know, Yaoi fans with them. It was this weird thing. Um, cosplayers we already talked about. Uh, Japanese ball jointed doll fans or JVD fans were, there was a girl that had her uh, ball jointed doll hand, uh, knocked out her hand and broken. I don't know if you know, those creepy little dolls are like $1,200, some of them. They're really not cheap. They're really, really expensive, so uh, that's horrible. There's also show-specific bullying. Uh, Italia, Black Butler, uh, you know, people definitely bully based on what you like, and that's kind of ridiculous, yeah. I, I totally can't hear you. Just, uh, of course, the minute you start talking, they all start screaming. So... <laughs> Oh wow, no I didn't hear about that. So that was at PAX or PAX East? They got kicked out and they are never going back to PAX. Wow, wow. They were harassing the, was it the Laura Croft cosplayers? Yeah, because they do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's, that's PAX, dude. It's a video game every convention. You would think there would be a million Laura Croft cosplayers there. In front of the Tomb Raider community. Yeah, in front of the Tomb Raider uh, display. That's crazy. Um, so. Like, here's the thing, I'm gonna attack the convention side of this first. What do you do when you see somebody being bullied at a convention? Because how many of you have witnessed other people being bullied at a convention? Wow, not many. Pay attention, please. <laughs> it happens, I, I hear it in the halls all the time. I hear people, you know, making fun of like, oh, did you see that girl? You know, like the whole weird thing. So what do you do? Like, 
uh, let's say it's severe, what do you do? Yeah. Uh, well, you report it up to the uh, con safety staff. Uh, con safety, yeah, definitely. Find anybody with a badge. Staff members don't make themselves hard to find. We wear shirts that say staff. We have special badges. Some of them wear armbands. I know the con I'm going to next week in Kentucky, they wear like bandanas, colored bandanas around their neck. So, yeah, I mean, staff make themselves very well known. It's very easy to find staff members. Uh, if it seems extreme, what can you do? Yeah, thank you. This is my best friend, my phone. The weird thing about bullying, specifically if we're dealing with a situation where a girl's costume is being ripped off, just don't pass go, call the police. If you see a crime being committed, call the police. Uh, and I had a convention get in my face for saying that. They're like, no, they should always go to the con staff first. No, if the law is being broken, call the police. It's the best thing to do. Uh, the police will know how to deal with the convention. The police will know how to deal with the con. Well, I sh should say they should. They don't always know what to do. Sometimes they come in like a bull in a china shop. Uh, but, you know, that's all about perspective too. If they hear there's an attack, you know, they're ready for action. So you have to understand what their, their, their goal is too. Um, what if it's passive bullying? What if you see a group of guys Messing, let's say homestuck hunters. What do you see? What do you do if you see a group of guys harassing a bunch of homestuck people? No. That's a tough one. That's I, I love this question because it's not the easy one to answer. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you have to take your own personal safety into account. Definitely. Definitely. It's smart. You might unintentionally escalate the situation. Most definitely. Yeah, yeah. We were just talking to you. How many of y'all have been in the vendor's room this weekend? How many of y'all saw the booth that has all the swords and the blinking lights? And he's the guy that's been selling lights at the rave all weekend. Okay, the guy that runs that booth, his name is Xavier. He is taller than a mountain. He is like <laughs> tall. Dreadlocks, nose ring, jewelry. You would be terrified if this guy came waltzing at you. But we were talking about him the other night. The way he deals with situations when people are ugly, he's like, oh, man, I can't believe he did that to me. <laughs> he gets, he can minimize just the most hectic, moronic person with that like, oh, is that the way you're gonna do me? Like, and it's always like, oh man, I'm really hurt. Uh, you get really far sometimes by just going, oh, are we picking on people? Like, oh, don't pick on those guys. They're just having fun. Like, uh, and if you, I'm glad you said take your own safety into account. If you don't feel comfortable, like there's some of us that walk into dangerous situations and go, I don't see a problem here. Uh, uh, that's me. Uh, sometimes I do it when I shouldn't. Uh, but if you don't feel comfortable in those kinds of situations, then that's the thing, you find a staff member and you go, hey look, there's a group of girls that are just having fun, they're playing Duck Duck Goose, they're all dressed as trolls, or even if you don't know what Homestuck Phantom looks like, but they all have blue faces and their things that look like candy corn coming out of their hair, and you know, like, uh, that's, and they're, they're being picked on by these guys. Can you do anything? Can you say something to them? Nine times out of ten, they will find a way to deal with the situation. They'll come up and go, hey, you can't harass these girls. Uh, and sometimes it's easier to let the con deal with it because like you said, if you bring it up, they're like, hey, uh, are you the boss of me? Like, but somebody with the badge kind of is. If they're like, hey, uh, I hear you giving these girls a hard time. Well, yeah, what's the problem? They're, uh, you know, they're home suckers, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, we don't let that happen here. Any more lip and the next thing is like, uh, can I see your badge? And it's over and they have to get off the property pretty fast. So like sometimes it's easy just to go find someone on staff and go, hey, this weird situation is going down. Same with cosplayers. I watched a girl having the feathers from her wings being slowly yanked by different people just because they thought it was funny. Just they're like, ugh. Because, you know, cosplayers that have big wings, let's face it, that's annoying and it gets in the way and whatever. But there's also 30 or 40 hours that went into it. These kids were just following around like, like pulling a feather. Well, she was just trying to make it to a crowded vendor's room, which is 
like I just tried to do that in there and I had no wings and it was still killing me. Uh, so like they were they were messing with her. That is a perfect example of somebody that just finds a staffer and goes, look, they're defacing the costume, they're they're causing damage to something she worked on. Can you please address this situation? Um, the other thing is talk to each other about it. Like uh, and it's funny because I I do this panel and a really good friend of mine that I do that knows I do this panel actively is involved with a group of people on Tumblr that harass Homestuck fans. Uh, and so I had in this conversation, I'm like, yo, uh, bro, what are you doing? And I didn't get his face, I was just like, why is this funny to you? And he's like, well, they take the bait, they take the troll bait every time. I'm like, since when was it cool to be a troll, dude? Like, since when was it cool to rat, like, at the end of your life, when you list you the achievements you're the most proud of, trolling people is probably not going to be in that list of accomplishments. Uh, oh, well, I made these, you know, 15 girls cry. And you'd be met with, what? Really, that's an achievement. Uh, so I think it's partly our job to talk to our own friends, because all of us have uh, that one dumb friend. I seem to have 20 or 30 of them. Uh, and I love all of them just as much, but uh, sometimes it's our job to just go, look, I don't know if you realize what you're doing, but you're doing the same thing that people do to you for liking anime, or for being tall, or for being fat, or whatever. You're doing the same thing that you don't like people do to you. So, um, that's another one, yeah. Oh, you know what, I had thought the internet had gotten to be a nice place until I looked up my name on Tumblr and, oh, oh. Oh, 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 just I am for a pretty hate machine lesson, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I, my friend has a saying that I can't say. I'll say wussies instead of the word that she uses. <laughs> But uh, now you know what the word is. Uh, she says the biggest wussies always draw their swords on the internet. And I believe that to be true. There was a guy that did this thing on me a few years ago. He defaced this website and said I was a pedophile and that I like to drum roll, touch little girls. Uh, I'm like, oh, dude, you just made yourself look dumb. Like, you didn't, you obviously didn't get the rainbow paper memo, did you? All right, well. Here, here, here's, a, here's a cosmopolitan, have fun. Uh, but, uh, but the same guy that did that had sat across the table from me at dinner two nights prior and didn't say a word to my face. Well, guess what? I'm the kind of guy that might make him eat his teeth for lunch. So, of course he wouldn't say that to my face. But sitting in his mom's basement, I'm sure he had all the, all the powers of Grayskull at his command. And, uh, and so it gave him all the power he wanted to. I think the bigger thing about internet hatred, and, I, and I'm glad you mentioned this, because cyberbullying is the weirdest form of bullying to deal with. Does anybody know what the proper solution to cyberbullying is? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh my god, wow. So, so then what are you left to do? So what are you left to do if there's no specific means or actions set to, to get a positive reaction from dealing with it, what do you do? This is a sociology question too, yeah. There's three. Uh, one is ignoring... Yes, that's the most important. Absolutely do not pay it any attention. If it's on a service provided service, uh, see I got a lot of the cost. Yeah. Or three, because there is cyberbullying also does more like actual criminal actions. Criminal harassment, yeah, that's correct. Uh, usually the FBI and Interpol are not too super interested in it. You can, it usually have to involve state authorities. Here's, here's the way, easiest way you deal with it. If it is not breaking the law, which uh, in my case it was, someone claiming I am a pedophile when I am not is a slander. 
but when it's not breaking the law, let's say if someone's saying you're dumb and you should kill yourself. Uh, well, you know, that's somebody who's very obviously so miserable with their own life that they sit and mess with people on the internet. So you ignore that. Uh, if crime is being committed, you contact the authorities. Uh, and the authorities, again, are getting caught up to speed on technology still, uh, but they usually have to be the ones to deal with the internet service providers because of the photo, let's say, uh, there was that whole revenge porn thing that was going on where people's exes were sent, you know, forwarding their nudes and they were being posted against their will. Well, in many cases, they were illegal because the people were like 16 or 17. Uh, all that you have to do is find out where that web host is, and you can do is you can. There's a who is lookup on any web server. Once you know what state that service is located in, you call the federal authority, or the local authorities there, the state authorities, and they'll deal with it. Now, with kitty stuff, you could probably call the federal, and they, they would get very interested in that too. But. Um, Cyberbullying is the hardest because you have to realize that it's just someone taking a crack at you in the hopes of getting a reaction. That's the only reason cyberbullying exists. Uh, and my friends get more upset about stuff that's said about me online. Somebody's like, do you see what they about you on 4chan? Uh, no. I wasn't on 4chan, so I don't know. Uh, there's this post that Greg Harris is a gigantic faggot. And I was like, did they finish that sentence? And I was like, I gave away the first part myself. Uh, I don't care what some, like, and calling me a name, like, that's like, I was, I was raised in a really racist uh, area of town at one point in my life, and my parents always taught me that when somebody throws a racial slur at someone, it means they lost the fight. The minute you resort to name calling, you lose. So, like, to me, somebody called me a faggot, I'm like, oh, well, you've already run out of things to say this fast? I must not have done much. Um, but you really have to grow a weird, thick skin, and it's one of the times that I do spend a lot of time, I have a lot of young friends that have been cyberbullied, and it's the only time I spend undue time talking to kids. Because uh, I learned an important lesson watching what they did to Michael Jackson. Uh, I, I try to limit my phone conversations with children, but uh, that's one of the few times that I'll say, look, listen, no one's looking at that picture. No one cares what that person has to say. And uh, to me, the internet is like a great big toilet, too. Sometimes, this is a horrible analogy. This is why I shouldn't teach children. Uh, sometimes the crap in the toilet floats to the bottom and goes away. And the same with the internet. Um, and when, when I was a victim of it, I thought, because there was a page on the internet that said Craig Ayers is a pedophile, every day, I thought everyone on the internet was looking at that page. No, there was only a few people that even knew that page existed. Um, and it's really tough. Cyberbullying is one of those weird things. The neat thing is, uh, places like Facebook uh, are making really strict rules about stuff like that. And, I don't always like the way Facebook enforces things, but they are becoming hip to that. They are becoming hip to the fact that kids in school are being harassed by, hang on, somebody's looking for somebody, so hang on. Uh, you might need to go and come back. Um, but uh, luckily, there are, there are now people that are keeping an eye on things like that. And there are now new crimes, or new laws being written. Uh, my problem with laws, I used to work at a law firm, by the time a law is written, it's outdated. Uh, so really the easiest advice I could give in cyberbullying is just ignore it. Um, anybody, I saw somebody else's hand up. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm, I'm a preschool teacher, so. Oh, thank you for being a teacher. That's an awesome job, by the way. Oh, wow. Not nice to have because you know 
know, it's not going to uh, lead to anywhere. It's yeah, just, yeah. Like, well, you said your name's on it. Yeah, it's it really taking, and I think with bullying, the only time that is not true is when it becomes physical bullying. Right. But people that use words to bully, I think it's, it's kind of like the internet thing. If your words don't get to me, you'll eventually get tired of messing with me and you'll go find somebody that's gonna give you the reaction you want. Yeah. Either feeling scared of you or getting hurt, crying. But if you're like, you keep saying that, you know, if, if somebody calls me a name every day, I'm like, man, do you have anything else to say? And I just don't care, like, and I really don't. Uh, and if you teach people not to let those things bother them, uh, my, my, uh, my, my thing is telling me my panel's over, but it's clearly not. Um, ah, okay, there. Um, I think teaching kids at a very young age, and here's the weird thing, you probably notice working with kids that age, some kids are predisposed to just pick on other kids. Yeah, yeah, biting. Yeah. I don't like that. Dealing with that age, you deal with probably a lot more than the, the high school kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is worse? Two quick anecdotes. Yeah. Anecdotal things to support what other people said. One was, uh, you know, like teaching your kids, you know, so. Yeah. I have, I have children, cosplayers, and it's just a matter of if it's a single use thing, someone just said something, whether it's on Tumblr or anything else. What I've always tried to teach her is work is one, look at the source. Is that someone whose opinion matters to you? Ah, uh, that's a really neat way of looking at that. With respect, it should. And take solace in the fact that those kind of people, that trolling probably is going to be the only accomplishment they have in their life. <laughs> at the end, it's all they have to put on the list. Yeah, and exactly. As far as the criminality things, there's a lot of, uh, I have a lot of friends in law enforcement. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the laws are getting better with treating yeah. harassment. Yeah. I had a nephew who became repetitive. It wasn't a one-time thing. It wasn't yeah. a name calling. It was two or three kids Pushing. day after yeah. day after day. Even if it doesn't arise to a criminal thing, you tell the authorities. Definitely. The mere fact of the police officer calling that house to ask the you bet. to put an end to it immediately. Yeah, so and that's why. For the schoolyard stuff like that, Definitely. a lot of cases that will take care of it. For more yeah. serious stuff, then you know, they'll take yeah. care of it. Well, and I'm glad you said that because that's kind of the way I feel about, like, when I, when I was talking in this convention, they're like, don't tell people to call the police. One, if it's a crime, we're told our whole lives that we, we, we view a crime being committed, call the police immediately. The other is, I think there is a group of kids within fandom that think that what they do here doesn't count. Like, it's like, oh, this is a pretend world, so I can get away with this. Oh, man, nothing like seeing a cop to realize this is the real world. You know, like, the, the things that you do at a convention, there was a guy that was dressed as the last Airbender character, the, the blue, I don't know, Aang, is it Aang? <laughs> yeah. And uh, he had a staff, and he kept lifting girls' skirts up and saying that he was commanding the wind to blow their skirt up. And uh, the I can't repeat the dialogue between he and the police, but it was pretty funny. He was like, no, we were at an anime convention. Girls' skirts magically rise up, and it was like, no, insert word here, 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 and here. This is the state of Kentucky, and guys like blah, 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 go to jail for blah, 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 like blah, blah, blah. Like, it was, it was pretty, pretty hardcore, but it was like, oh, my good sir, and this magical answer, and the cop's like, no, nah, you're in the state of Kentucky. Like, this is pretty fantastic. But, uh, yeah, your wrists are magically bound by this carbon steel. Yeah, exactly. This is a different show. Locked up, futuristic 44 AD. Yeah, totally. That's funny. I have completely the wrong answers for your earlier line of what if I saw something. Yo, oh, yeah, well, me too. Me too. That's why I teach these classes eventually, or do these lectures eventually. Maybe I'll do the right thing. I am the guy that has a hockey temper. And, uh, Oh yeah, yeah me too. And then their attention's on me now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when maybe give somebody a way to make a fast exit. That's why when I was talking, when he brought up, well, if your own safety's, you know, in question, I'm like, well, there's some people that don't know better. Like, hey, buddy, hey, hey, come here. <laughs> yeah, that's me. And I try not to be. I think part of that is the fact that, and this is interesting too, kids that were bullied and pushed around and had those problems as kids sometimes have a different problem as adults because they can't see that and not 
have it flip a switch and go, oh, yo, you want to mess with somebody? Let's, let's do this. Like, uh, and that's a problem, too, because I have to realize that that's me bullying. You know, sometimes that's me doing that to like some 17-year-old. And just because they were picking on a 15-year-old, this is now me intimidating a 17-year-old, and that's not cool either. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, you've had your hand up for a while. Yeah. It's tough. I get the video game thing is hard for a lot of parents to understand. And I know there's a reasonable amount of time you should, you know, if you're in high school and you're supposed to be doing homework, you really shouldn't be playing Bioshock and Infinite for like eight hours at a time. Like, you know, a few hours in, in uh, Columbia is all you need each day. But, uh, uh, and you know, killing zombies is fun and relaxing, but you also need to get work done too. And it's tough because I think some parents are just terrified that their kids are gonna put the priority there. Uh, and I've seen parents that way go overboard with their, well, there's gonna be no video games in this house. Well, is there gonna be no fun either? You know, like, so uh, yeah, and I, I always try to step in and like say, well, you know, actually video games improve motor coordination and stuff like that. Maybe we need to talk about a healthy amount of video games, but yeah, it bothers me when people's parents want to take away everything that their kids love uh, just because it's weird to them. Hey, I got news for you. My folks uh, like John Denver, and I think that's pretty weird. Uh, I tried to listen to some John Denver music. Well, because it's from a different time period, and it sounds different. To them, it was beautiful music, but to me, like, Skrillex is beautiful music, <laughs> you know? And uh, that's just the difference in, in what I like and what they like, so... Uh, like, it's tough. I know parents do that a lot. I hear about it a ton. Yeah. And, and I'm not ignoring this side of the room. Y'all are next. If you yeah. you picture a child, your child's going to find it somewhere else. They'll be going to a friend's house and playing the video games or going to be sneaking it into the house somehow. You know, it's not going to help. Because the more you ban it, like, you know, uh, parents thought the, the liquor cabinet, the same thing with alcohol and drugs, you know, it's the same thing. And they go crazy about it. And the kid, I mean, not like you should encourage drugs or alcohol. Well, I'm telling you, when I was little, and my dad had a little shot with my grandfather, let's say, and I was six years old, that he put his finger in the scotch and put it on my tongue, and I'm telling you, I didn't want to touch that stuff. Well, yeah, as a kid, you're like, ah, uh, right? I, I don't want to drink that again. Exactly, so I said, you're like, oh, no, don't touch this, don't touch this, don't touch this. He said, here, he used to get on my finger, and I'm yeah. like, okay, now I know what that is, I don't want that. Yeah. You know, it stuck with me. Yeah, it's weird, like, that's the way I would be as a parent, uh, and I, that way with my dogs, I guess, because it's as close as I'm going to get to having kids anytime soon. Uh, but, um, but again, each person raises their kids their own way. What I try to tell, what I try to tell people, especially like when we're talking about this video game thing, is that parents don't get a guidebook either. And I try to tell kids, look, and this even goes for, I've got a bunch of, you know, young gay friends that are like, my parents are dumb and they quote the Bible at me and they say I'm gonna do this and they say I hate them and da-da-da. And I'm like, hey, look, your parents are just reacting. Give your parents a chance to prove that they're a little cooler than you think they are too. And just like your pops came around and was like, hey, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give her, I'm gonna give her a take look. Ooh, see how nasty this whiskey is? Uh, like, Sometimes parents have to come about truths in whatever their own way. I like that your folks just took a direct approach, like, no, this isn't good for you. But sometimes, like with the video games thing, sometimes it takes a while for them to warm up to it, and it's just about talking to them. I'm gonna pick you in a minute, but I promised the side of the room I wasn't gonna ignore them any longer. So who was over here? You were one, definitely. Because that's, 
I want to talk about that just quickly, uh, simply because you, you say that. You know, we talk about the beginning of the roots of this project come from like suicide, and I know we've already had one person mention suicide. Uh, that each one of us can do to be a, pro a part of the solution to that. And I'm not going to address mental health because that's its own ball of wax. Uh, I don't think every person that's ever committed or con considered suicide or committed suicide is bipolar or has some disorder that has to have pills. Some people just get overwhelmed with grief and feel hopeless. Uh, there's something that each one of us can do to make that a little easier on the people around us, and that is to try to be a good friend to people around you. To try to be that one person that, you know, I have a friend that you can literally call her at any time of the day or the night, and you could tell her anything, and she would not judge you for it. You could tell her that you just killed someone, and she would say, well, now, you know I'm going to have to call the police eventually, <laughs> but um, what happened? And not even like you filthy human being, but like, oh, what, uh, what led to that, you know, situation? Uh, having a friend that you can tell anything to, even some things that may not feel comfortable to you, some, wow, or maybe you just need to call him and do that, and just make that sound a bunch of times, and it may, makes you feel a little bit better. Uh, sometimes just having something to let it all out at and just bounce it off of uh, is, is sometimes the thing that will keep them from not wanting to wake up the next day because they have that one person they can always turn to and just go, today didn't go real well at all. Oh, well, that's all right, sweetie, I love you, da da da, what happened? Um, and there's a bigger, there's a bigger part of this that I address specifically because we're at an anime convention there are also people among us that their only crime is they don't know how to make friends. And sometimes we have to look around us and see somebody that looks like they're all by themselves and be the first person to reach out and try to be a friend to someone. That's the weirdest thing to tell people because it seems creepy. It's, it's one of the weirder things, like especially being an older guy. Like I, it's, It weirds me out so bad to hear Little kids think everyone's a creeper. I got news for you, little girl. You have nothing I want. I'm just trying to be nice. Nice costume. Let's try this again. Nice costume. Bye. Uh, but, but I think it is important that we try to be friends with people and we try to make friends with people because uh, some people are just shy. Some people are just having a bad day. I don't know the number of times I've been in a convention and I saw someone crying because there's a lot of drama that can happen when you put this many people in a hotel. I don't know what it is about being in a hotel, but the, the drama llama just walks through the hotel. Uh, and I always try to go, oh sweetie, are you okay? Like, what's going on? What's wrong? You know? And if it's something I can't solve, I'm like, I'm like, oh, well, are you going to be okay? Do you want me to go find somebody? But uh, try not to be callous and try not to walk past somebody that looks like they're having a problem. Now sometimes it's trauma, and your drama meter will go off when it's trauma. <laughs> And so he's like, okay, I have this friend, she's horrible, and blah, 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 like, oh, no, 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 I don't know your friend, I gotta go, there's a panel that's starting, oh, look, the panel already started, I gotta go. But um, when it looks like someone's a need or someone needs a friend, definitely try to be an ear to them, that might make all the difference in the world. Uh, yeah, you've had your hand up for a while. That's a really important thing. She said, as, as a lesbian, how do you deal with overtly or really, really, really religious people? Uh, and it's something that I have a hard time dealing with in this panel because we just recently did a panel where there was a large number of gay and lesbian kids and it almost turned into a God bashing panel. And I was like, no, 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 we're not doing that either. We can't bash anything in here. Uh, it's tough. Uh, and. Probably my opinions on that will anger some people, but uh, that guy that that book is about wasn't a very judgmental person at all. Uh, he hung out with the weirdest people in the world. Uh, and even if those weird people chose to pass judgment on people around him, that's not who he was. Uh, and I try to talk to people, um, if people want to get in my face about religion, I, one of the things I love to tell them is like, oh, you know, the worst thing is some of the most horrifying wars in this world's history have been fought over religion. Let's just, let's just not agree on it. Let's just say bye and not agree on it. Uh, I, 
if, if it doesn't work for you, don't do it. But am I hurting anyone? No. Uh, I know that this conversation doesn't stop there, sadly. And there are a group of people that have some pretty strong answers. Uh, one, if you've never seen it, I highly recommend you watch it and listen very carefully. There's a young man named Matthew Fines who did a YouTube video, or some, actually the church made the video, that's uh, called Matthew Vines, What the Bible Really Says About Homosexuality. And if you want some actual ammo uh, when talking to religious people, this kid spent two years studying just this subject. And it's a real eye-opening video, and he has a lot of really great things to say. That's not going to always win everybody over. Uh, there's still going to be people religiously that are like, well, I don't believe in this. Well, okay. But at least your Bible tells you not to be mean to people, right? The Bible tells you to treat others the way you would want to be treated. You don't have to believe what I believe, but how about we be nice to each other? Let's call this a day and we'll say bye and be nice to each other. Now, again, going back to uh, something we have in common, that's not always the way I deal with them. Uh, I have very different answers I like to give, but <clears throat> I also know that I react ways based on things that have happened to me in my past that are just the way I'm wired. But if I can stop and step out of my body for a second, that's how I'd want to respond to that. It's like, oh man, that's not, not the, let's pretend we're both Jesus and be nice to each other. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I think, I think we should be nice. Uh, uh, and that's not, and I'm not going to just say there's one religion either. Uh, I have a friend who's, uh, who's uh, Islamic and her, her family and her fight about lots of cultural differences. Uh, and the key to unlocking those things and fixing those things is this. This and not this. Now I'm putting on a puppet show for you. This means screaming, by the way. Uh, but like talking to each other and having conversations, smart conversations. Uh, and sometimes smart conversations get heated and you have to know when to walk away and go, oh, psh, let's go have some, let's go get a drink real quick. Let's, let's, there's pie in the other room. Let's go, <laughs> let's have a pie break. Uh, but you can't get to the bottom of anything by everybody being right. And that's the, that's the hardest thing to convince somebody. And I feel so old when I say that now because as a kid I was like, you know, everything was, I'm right, I'm right, I'm going to fight you on this. Uh, sometimes... You just have to, perspective is a big thing. You have to understand where somebody's coming from. Uh, plus, uh, that's, you know, not to say anything bad about churches or whatever, but that's what some of our parents have been taught their whole lives. And they've, and they've not questioned it because they've trusted the person telling them what to think was doing the right thing. And as we've watched all of those guys get in trouble for this scandal or this scandal or this scandal, uh, we now see that those guys weren't always right, and so I think it's important to be able to give, like I said, give your parents the chance to expand their brain, too. Parents are just big kids, by the way. They look and act more responsible, but they are big kids, and they're capable of learning and, and re-understanding things, too. So, uh, there was somebody over there, but she's right gone. There. Oh, she's right there. Where is she? Oh, right there. Oh, wait. Sorry. <laughs> I'm waiting until you're in the middle of something. Like, what's your question? No. Sorry, I didn't mean to embarrass you. I was like, wait, she was just there a second ago. No, it's okay. Dude, did you have something you wanted to say? No, I was just gonna talk. I was just gonna like tell like about like people like having like suicidal thoughts about stuff. Yeah, speak up, or if you want, uh, you can come use my microphone. I can't hear you. Hey, it's not every day I lift my microphone now. This whole I'm gonna cut thing is fairly new. Uh, but 
one of the things that I love telling people, like that, like I tell people, I'm like, you're beautiful. Why would you scar up your arms? Or why would you cut yourself? And uh, that's awkward to say sometimes to look at somebody and go, well, you're beautiful, you know, like. But uh, even if not for me, like at some point you're gonna want to have a husband or a wife or something, and uh, they're gonna look at that and they're gonna be reminded that you were in pain at some point in your life, and that's gonna be very hard for them to look at. Uh, and for the people that claim that it's just for attention, there's a reason that someone does something like that. Cutting does not feel good. Uh, so there's a reason somebody does something like that. And the bigger thing is to try to, to be the person that convinces them not not to do it, because sometimes that's the wrong approach. But like, why, why do you feel the need to hurt yourself? The person that says they're gonna kill themselves, I know this is a hard thing to deal with because as kid, kids say that a lot, like, oh, I just wanna kill myself. Uh, yeah, but if it's somebody that really means it, then the thing to do is to say, well, look, let's talk about this. It's okay to feel like this, but it's not okay to think that this is an option. You know, like, there's, I said I wanted to kill people, and I did. Uh, but it's never an option to go kill anyone. <laughs> I can say it and get it out of my system and maybe feel a little bit better about it. And then if they continue and they tell you that they're really serious, that's when you find a way to talk to their folks or talk to someone at school and say, look, this person's probably not gonna forgive me for ratting this out, but I care more about them, them still being here tomorrow than our friendship. And that's the ultimate sacrifice. Like sometimes you have to say, look, I really don't want you to be mad at me, but more than anything, I wanna be able to call you tomorrow or the next day, so yeah. And be a good friend. It sounds like you're a very concerned friend, so. Oh, she says, and if you do that again, I will cry. Yeah, and you know what? Sometimes that might be enough. They might not want to see you cry. They might just be like, they'd be like, I'm sorry, I won't kill myself enough. But uh, yeah, maybe you can guilt it out of them. But uh, definitely keep being a good friend. And then if it becomes habitual and they say that too many times, just say, look, I think you're abusing the fact that I take time out of, you know, I think you're abusing the fact that I care about you because every time you say that it hurts me, I don't want you to kill yourself. Uh, and I think you're taking advantage of the fact that every time you say that I'm going to spend, you know, all this time trying to convince you not to. I already think you're an awesome person. Why don't you do the same to me, you know, treat me better. But uh, I, I wish that people should have more friends like you. You sound like you're very concerned for your friends. So be nice to her or him and maybe they'll get over it. Being young is tough, like, you know, I, I don't say they're making it up because there's plenty of reasons you feel like that. But thank you. There's somebody, I just saw a hand shoot up. Oh, it's on their head now. I'm sorry, now that I called you up to the front of the room, she's gonna do that whole walking back thing. <laughs> But it was cool, we got to hear you, you got to play with the microphone. Yeah. Sometimes just having that friend that's like, no, 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 what's going on? What's really happening? No, let's talk about this. Uh, and some people don't have those friends. Like some people don't have those friends. Uh, and I will tell you, as you, you're a witness to this, having that friend makes all the difference in the world. Having that friend just say, look, I know you feel bad. It's okay to feel bad. You can even cry on me if you want. Uh, but let's, let's figure out a way to fix this. Let's figure out a way to, you know, Make whatever's making you feel bad go away so that we can get back to having fun. Uh, there's too many fun things. Like, oh my god, this weekend is pretty fun though. There's way too much fun to be had to worry about some douchebag of, well that's not a dirty word. It's a, it's a medical device. Uh, uh, you know, to worry about some person that's just been messing with you, you know, like, if you let that get to you, then you don't get to cosplay and you don't get to do all these great things, so. Yeah, again, why should we teach children?
Nas,